You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Okay, everybody, listen up. Listen up, all right. I know it's late, and some of you have tests tomorrow. So I won't keep you too much longer, but I'd like to run the beginning of that last scene just one more time. I suck it, I suck Emily? It. Right, Mr. Galvin? Places for the top of Act 4, Scene 1, please. Hey, Diane. What? Do you want to get some coffee when this is over? Rick, we're not going to get out of here before midnight. And your point would be? Well, wait a second. Phil, you might want to be ready with the drop in case he decides to run the scene change. Okay. Run the top of the scene, please. Sound. Ready. Go. Thrice the brinded cat hath mewed. Thrice and once the hedge pig whined. Harpier Cries, tis time, tis time. So, uh, coffee? No, why not? I won't be sleepy till... Hey! Hey! What's the matter? Ah, ow! Ow! Don't grab that barehanded! Here, let me... It won't go anywhere now. Come over here to the light so I can see your hand. No, no, it's okay. But that line shouldn't have taken off like that. It's tied off. We'll check it later. Um, Diane, could you take him to the office? The first aid kit's I uh... don't need a... <laughs> oh, you were saying? Okay, uh, maybe, maybe a band-aid. Come on. Uh... <laughs> It hurts when I touch it. Huh. <sighs> Easier to see out here. Ow! Ooh, ooh, you did get a rope burn there, didn't you? Yeah, I, I guess so. Hey, uh, Mr. Galvin's not gonna be looking for you, is he? No, he's just running the witch's scene. Lady Macbeth's got nothing until- Oh! Didn't mean to startle you. <sighs> I didn't know you were here, Glenn. Came in at 11, same as always. What'd you do to your hand, Phil? I uh, grabbed a running line. Without your gloves? <laughs> well, everybody does it once. It's the ones who do it twice that you want to watch out for. Right. Good. That's it. We'll pick up from there tomorrow. Sounds like you're done. I'm just gonna help Phil with his hand before we go. That's a good idea. All right, Toby. Just a few more minutes. Leave the office uh, open when, when you're finished, will you? It needs a good vacuuming like nobody's business. <laughs> I will. Thanks. Come on, Toby. Hey. How do you suppose he got him to let him bring his dog to work? Well, he's been the janitor here since... Oh, I'm, since forever. That probably helps. And there's nobody else here most of the time. No need for that. She means well, just doesn't know as much as she thinks she does, that's all. All right, hold still just a second. I'm almost done. All right, uh, I guess we're finished. Six o'clock call for tomorrow, um, and as soon as your hand's wrapped up, you can go home, Phil. Unless you want to grab some coffee with us. Thanks, but I better just go home and get some sleep. Hey, do you want to come in early tomorrow? Ah! Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. I just wanted to make sure it was clean before I put the gauze on. Wait a second. Early? What for? Won't we have to reweight that line? No, no. I, I flew it in a couple of times. It's not off balance at all. 
It doesn't make any sense. How could it take off like that, then? There. Try bending your hand. That, that's good. Thanks. But the line... It's probably the jinx. Jinx? What, what jinx? The jinx on Macbeth. It's... All right, you three. I need to clean up in here. Sorry. We're out of here. I'll tell you the story later, Phil. Good night, Glenn. Good night. It's okay, boy. Like I said, she just doesn't know as much as she thinks she does. Now, let's get to work, huh? End of rehearsal for a college production of Macbeth. The sets are built, the actors have learned their lines, and the director is finally starting to believe that the show's coming together. The playwright, of course, is absent. But if he were here, he might be tempted to offer a quote from another one of his plays and remind these students that there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in their philosophies. A good idea to keep in mind, especially when the curtain is about to rise in the twilight zone. And now, the twilight zone and our story, And Cauldron Bubble, starring Virginia Williams with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Well, hey, Phil. I wasn't sure I'd see you here today. Skip a scene shop class this week? I don't know how bad you have to be hurt to get away with that. <laughs> well, at least they found you a job you can do one-handed. Yep. I can splatter fake stone walls with the best of them. Hey, you. <laughs> Hi, yourself. We finished with the costumes a little early, and I thought... Hey, Rick, when you two are done, how about giving me a hand with this flat? Uh, sure, Alan. But only because you asked so nicely. Sorry, it's been a lousy day. What happened? I told you about my job, right? Uh, scanning medical records, right? Yeah, it's a great gig, good pay, work your own hours, take extra time off for shows. So, what's the problem? The problem is somebody at the hospital figured out that they could buy some equipment, hire somebody to scan their own stuff, and take in work from other places besides. Man, this piece is heavier than it looks. Hey, uh, Diane, Lindsay, could you come here a sec? Yeah, sure. All right, one, two, three, and up. There we go. Thanks. Anyway, the scanning is going to be done in-house now, so they don't need me anymore. What are you gonna do? I don't know. I can't even think about looking for another job until after the show opens. And trying to find something that fits in around this schedule, well, you know what it's like. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna have my job much longer if my car doesn't quit acting up. Twice this week I've been late because it didn't want to start. You can't just throw a few creepy bits into a cauldron and whip up a car repair potion? I wish. <laughs> Only when I'm on stage, but thanks for the suggestion. Hey, hey, Diane, is that is that your jinx again? Ha! <laughs> the one on Macbeth? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, and don't start thinking about it now either, Lindsay. I swear, actors are the most superstitious people I know. <laughs> oh, and techies aren't superstitious? Go on stage and whistle, Alan. Yeah, I dare you. Hey, there's a reason for that, you know. Right, Rick? Right. The first people to fly scenery in theaters were actually sailors. They already knew how to work with ropes and pulleys, and they didn't have headsets in those days, so they used a different type of whistle to cue every line. And nobody else whistled backstage. Now, wouldn't you feel unlucky if somebody brought a set piece down on your head because you forgot that? Hey, aren't you supposed to be on my side? Always. I can tell you more about it at dinner. Come on, you guys. We got an hour and a half until call time. Who wants to go for Chinese food? Uh, I gotta go home, guys. If I don't have dinner with the parents at least one night a week, I won't need any jinxes to bring me bad luck. Believe me. Chinese sounds good to me. Yeah, me too. Got that last paycheck burning a hole in my pocket. Ah, so you're treating then. Uh, Phil, there's a whole lot of you that hasn't been wrapped in gauze yet, but that could change. Ow.
Ah, oh, here. There's still some Kung Pao chicken left. Oh, not for me, thanks. If I eat any more, I'll be able to fly the mane out just by leaning against the line. I think you're going to need a doggy bag, Diane. Make sure you don't call it that around Toby. He'd figure it was for him. <laughs> he's a smart dog, Phil, but I don't think he's that smart. I wouldn't bet against it. Have you ever seen him fetch tools for Glenn? He's the only dog I've ever seen who can tell a screwdriver from a crescent wrench. I've got a better one than that, Alan. Glenn had to come in during the day once, when somebody else was out, sick, and Toby came over to where he was working and scratched at the door, like he wanted to be let out. So? Our old dog did that, and he was so dumb he used to forget his name. So, Glenn tells him, I'm busy, go take a walk. And Toby goes to Glenn's toolbox, picks up a leash, and walks off with it in his mouth. He was still carrying it when he came back. I guess they both figured that if he had a leash, he didn't have to be on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't figure that guy out. I know he's been working at the school for a long time, but does anybody know what he did before that? Or anything about what he does when he's not at work? I keep forgetting, this is your first semester. You haven't had time to hear all of the stories yet. Some people say Glenn used to be a teacher somewhere, but he got tired of dealing with all the paperwork. Or that he was a roadie and all the partying finally caught up with him. Now that's something I'd love to see. Glenn partying, it boggles the mind. <laughs> but my favorite one is the one where he's writing romance novels under an assumed name and keeping the day job. Uh... The night job for the, uh, benefits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of writing, Phil, I never got a chance to tell you about the jinx. Oh, here we go again. Oh, hush, Alan. Read a fortune cookie or something. Here's the thing, Phil. Shakespeare may have been a genius, but he wasn't above borrowing things here and there. He was a plagiarist? Mm, 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 mm. Ordinary writers are plagiarists. Shakespeare was, well, Shakespeare. <laughs> so when he wanted to borrow something, he did. I am shocked. Alan. She won't stop you now. I beg pardon, oh, do go on. Thank you. Okay, it turns out that when he needed incantations for the witches in Macbeth, he lifted sections out of a 16th century book on Scottish witchcraft. All those speeches are really parts of spells. But what does that have to do with being a jinxed show? Magic is a lot like electricity, Phil. It's power. If a spell's done properly from beginning to end, the power is contained, focused. But if you just throw bits and pieces around with no real point to it and no direction, well... It's unpredictable. It's the difference between a light that comes up on cue and one that shorts out and arcs all over the place. See what I mean? Yeah, I, I think so. And the arcs are what brings the bad luck? Exactly. Every time Macbeth is performed, or rehearsed, or even read, uncontrolled power gets set loose. That's why some actors won't even say its name. They call it the Scottish play instead. Tell them what you're supposed to do if you do say it. Oh, you're making fun of me now. I just thought he'd want to hear it. Right. Well, I've never done it myself, but if you say Macbeth, you're supposed to spin in a circle three times, spit and swear. That takes the hoodoo off. <laughs> oh, that would make for a fun performance, wouldn't it? Tragedy, horror, spinning, spitting, swearing. And you wonder why I didn't mention it. Come on, I, you gotta admit, babe, it sounds a little odd. Oh, of course it does. And useless, too. If you actually wanted to do some good, casting a protection spell would make a lot more sense. Um, no offense, but... How do you know about this stuff, Diane? Well, my last roommate had a ton of books on magic. She left them when she skipped out on the rent. If you'd like to, I Better can... hold that thought. We've got to go soon, Lady Macbeth. Uh-oh. You know what I have to do now, don't you? <laughs> I know that if you do, I am going to take a picture and use it for my screensaver. Especially since you don't believe in any of this anyway. Hey, I'm not saying I couldn't be convinced. I just haven't been yet. Oh. I hope this isn't the show that changes your mind. Me too. That's a cue, Phil. Let's get the check and head out of here before they realize they've stopped arguing.
Rick, have you seen Lindsay? Uh, that's since before we left for dinner. She isn't in the green room? Not in the green room. Not in any of the dressing rooms. Not in the office. Mr. Galvin's going to want to call places as soon as the scenery is set and we're starting with her entrance. Hold on, j just a second. Has anybody seen Lindsay? Emily's looking for... Yeah, she's not up here. Sorry, nobody's seen her yet. Oh, this is going to be ugly. You know how Mr. Galvin gets when somebody's late. I sure do. I was late once, my first show, with Sir James Galvin, theater director par excellence. I thought he'd get me kicked out of school before he was done. Emily! Here we go. I hope he doesn't decide to shoot the messenger. Phil? Yes? The floor's clear. Go ahead and bring in the drop. Okay. He's not here! Oh boy. I think I'm going to find a set piece to hide under and stay there. Chicken. Rick. Did you know Lindsay's not She's not answering her cell. Try calling her parents. Maybe they know where she is. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows. I hope she's okay. Dan! Uh-oh. Yes, Mr. Galvin? Change of plans. We'll run through Lady Macbeth's speech from 1-5. Alan, bring out one of the chairs and never mind about changing the set. I'm hoping we'll be able to get back on schedule after this. All right, that's fine. All right, Diane, uh, from your entrance, go. They met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the perfectest report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air into which they vanished. Mr. Galvin! Whilst I stood... Stop! Emily, why would you... Emily, what's wrong? I didn't get an answer at Lindsay's parents, so I tried her cell again. Her father answered it this time. They're at the hospital with her in the emergency room. While she was on her way home for dinner, she got into an accident. Her car, her car stalled out in the middle of an intersection and she got broadsided by somebody trying to beat the light. Did they say how badly she was hurt? They think she's going to be all right. Her left arm's got a bad break and her mom says she's one big bruise. But it could have been a lot worse. All right, then. Uh, can I have everyone on stage, please? Quiet, please. Now, most of you probably just heard that Lindsay Morgan was involved in a car accident this afternoon. From what her parents told Emily, she should make a good recovery. However, I know that the show must go on is a cliché, but it's true, all the same. Lorene. Yes, sir? You've been understudying Lindsay. Do you know Hecate's lines well enough to work off book? Um, sh sure. Uh, the rest of you can take a break while Loreen and I go over some of her blocking. Then we'll pick up where we stopped last night, at Hecate's entrance. We shouldn't be long. Rick, Alan. Hey, can we go to the back office for a minute? Uh, sure. Is there something wrong? I don't... Are we going to the green room? I don't know, not right now. Come with us. What's going on? I'll tell you in a minute. Let's go. Uh, Diane? What? I'm still not sure I believe in jinxes, but it seems like something strange is going on here. Oh, good. The monitor's on. We'll be able to tell when they're done. Uh, babe, you want to tell us what this is about? Remember what I said about protection spells? Well, we need to cast one. And soon, before anyone else gets hurt. Settle down, Toby. It's still early. Don't you want your dinner? I know, I know. But there's time yet. Don't worry.
I think we should do it tomorrow night if we can, before we get an audience in here. You're starting to weird me out a little, Diane. Phil, she might be right. What? Think about it. Lindsay could have been killed. Maybe somebody will be next time. There are a whole lot of things you don't want to have happen when you've got a stage full of people. Exactly. And that's another thing. If I am right, this is going to get even worse, because the witches' scenes are going to be rehearsed so much more now with Laureen taking over Lindsay's part. Are you sure you can do this? Uh, cast a spell? And make it work? I... Yes. Yes. If you'll help me. Uh, I don't know how much help I'll be, but... I'm not gonna let you try this by yourself. Count me in. Me too, then. But I'm still a little weirded out, you know? I know. Okay, I think they're finished. We'd better go. All we have to do is find a way to have the place to ourselves for a little while after the rehearsal tomorrow night. And it'll be okay. I I'm sure of it. Bring up the lights! What's wrong? Sorry, we were moving the castle stairs out, and I think there's something jammed in the casters. Oh, for the love of... Can you see what it is? Uh, it's somebody's sword. Well, it was. I, I mean... Can you move the unit now? Yes, sir. All right, get it into place. Rick! Yes, Mr. Galvin. Bring the drop in. And then I want everyone to stop whatever they're doing and listen for a minute. Shit, I'm glad I'm not the one who dropped that sword. Well, I don't know how anybody could have dropped it. What do you mean? People, I'm assuming that you're all aware that tomorrow night's our dress rehearsal. That means we have exactly two more chances to get through this show, including tonight, before we do it in front of an audience. Is there anybody here who thinks we're ready? Nobody. Well, that makes it unanimous. Look, I went as easy on everyone last night as I could. We were all distressed by what happened to Lindsay. But we're running out of time here. So I'm telling you, start paying attention and get it together. Because if I have to choose between postponing the opening and letting you embarrass this department with a lousy performance, I know what the choice is going to be. And if it comes to that, you're all going to wish you'd gone to a nice trade school instead. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. We'll pick up where we stopped. Emily? Places for the top of 5-1. Light 78. Stand by. And go. I have two nights watched with you. But can perceive no truth in that your sword own. shouldn't have been there. I think everybody would agree with you. Walked. No, that's not what I mean. Majesty, They're only brought out for the fight scene. I have Mr. Galvin insisted. from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet. Well, somebody must have been goofing around. It couldn't have gotten there all by itself, right? I don't think I have an answer to that. Well, not one I want to think about right now, anyway. And besides, we have to talk about it later. My entrance is coming up. Just go out there and break a leg, then. But not really, okay? Huh? I'll do my best. All right, don't move. Everyone stay right where you are. Should have backup lights in just a moment. There, can you all see? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Good. Yes, sir. I'd, I'd say what else could go wrong if I weren't so afraid I might find out. So, here's what we're going to do. There's just the rest of the scene left and we're done. We're going to have an early call tomorrow and finish it before we start the dress rehearsal. 
be here at five. Whatever the problem with the power is, it should have been taken care of by then. Let us hope. Do we need to let Glenn know before he comes in? I don't think he'll bother coming in when he sees that the power's off, do you? Well, just put any props you have out away. Leave everything else as it is. That'll save us a little time tomorrow. Be careful on your way out, everyone. And do I really need to say, be on time tomorrow? Rick, I'm gonna wait behind the castle drop. Can you catch up with Phil and Alan and bring them back here? I think we finally caught a break, if nobody notices that we've stayed. Well, I don't think we'll get a better chance than this. Okay, but be quiet. Mr. Galvin may come back through to make sure everybody's gone. Hey, guys, have you seen Mr. Galvin? Oh yeah, he said something about making sure we closed the door behind us and took off. I think he had had it. Oh, so we're the last ones here. Yeah, uh, we hadn't seen you or Diane, so we figured you must still be back here. Okay, let's get started. I want the power going out to be the last shot that Jinx gets at us. Sounds good to me. What do we need to do first? I brought this book. Oh, but I need more light. And we have to get enough room to stand in a circle. L let's go further downstage. Okay, this is good. In a circle, about an arm's length apart. Just one thing. Will this take very long? I mean, what if somebody comes in to check on the power, then- Don't worry, we should be done and out of here without anyone having a clue. Alan, could you just move a little closer to Phil? There, that's better. Everyone needs to focus, to think about surrounding the theater and everybody in it with a white light that nothing bad can pass through. Just keep that image in your mind while I'm reading, okay? Okay. Here we go then. Spirits of air, grant us your protection. Spirits of earth, shield us with your strength. Spirits of water, make all that would harm us flow by. Spirits of fire, wrap us in the safety of your flames. Wait, did you hear that? Shh, not now, if we don't do it the way- Quick, get off the stage, now. <laughs> Diane, look out! Ah! Babe, you've got to get up. Ah! We need to get out of here. I... I... I can't. It's all right, Diane. We'll help you. You can do it. Oh! Diane, something really oh. bad is happening. We can't stay here. My side hurts. I think she's bleeding. Oh! Ah. We'll, we'll, we'll have to carry her then. We'll, we'll, let's just pick her up. Help, and... help, 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 Hey, hey, help. hey, the lights are... <sighs> I'm so sorry! Oh! Yes, Toby, you're right. It is a mess. Glenn? How did you... Later, Rick. But... but right now, there's some cleaning up to do. But, Glenn... Have a little patience, Rick. That's half your trouble, all of you. Not an ounce of patience among you. What have you been up to, Diane? Hmm? Glenn, I got hurt. Yes, I can see that. Looks as though a piece of that wall flat caught you on the side when you fell. Glenn, can you help us get her to a hospital? No need for that. Just... there. What do you mean? She's... What was that? Easy, easy. It doesn't hurt now, does it? No, not... 
No, it doesn't. She must be going into shock. We need silence. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't have time to argue right now. Come on, Toby. <laughs> what was that all about? I couldn't talk. Couldn't make a sound. Rick, could you help me up, please? No. Babe, don't try to stand up. But I'm fine. See? A little quiet, please. Thank you. All that is broken, be whole again. <gasps> Look at that. It's all going back together. What, what is this? Magic. No, it's really magic. All that has fallen, rise. It really is. All that has been disturbed, return to your proper place. And all that is unwanted here, be gone. So is my will, so mote it be. Thank you, Toby. That was just the extra push it needed. Nasty stuff, wasn't it? It really is. Uh, Glenn? Oh, yes. You had some questions, didn't you? Well, I have a few to ask you first. It's really not, I mean... Let's go sit down. There's nothing more to do here. And this could take a while. <sighs> and that's all I was trying to do. I just didn't want anybody else to get hurt. But you haven't learned enough yet to protect yourself, much less anyone else. No. Overreaching. Everybody does it once. It's the ones who do it twice that you want to watch out for. I'll remember that. <laughs> no, you won't. But that's all right. Uh, Glenn? Who are you? Really, I mean... I'm a janitor, among other things. What other things? Not a romance writer, I'm guessing. Is that the story they're telling now? <laughs> well, I've been accused of worse. Glenn, seriously. Seriously? Oh, why not? It won't matter anyway. I'm a magician, a wizard, a warlock. Whatever you want to call it, Diane, that's, that's what I am. And have been for a very long time. I've learned to adapt to my uh, station in life. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, a wizard? It just sounds unbelievable. Does it really? After what you've seen tonight? He has a point, Phil. Okay, but you have these, let's call them powers. We've all seen them. Why would you waste your time working here? I mean, you could do anything. You think so? Sure, why not? <sighs> because there's no such thing as magic. What? But you... That's what everyone says now, isn't it? Magic? That's something you go to Vegas to see, or to the movies. Something you read about in children's books. If it's something real you're after, they go to a scientist, an astronomer, a physicist. It's only the scientific marvels that matter now. The age of magic has passed. Hush, Toby. A man's entitled to a good grouse every century or so. Every... every century? Glenn... How old are you? Old enough to have seen Shakespeare's plays when they opened, and to have been written into his last one. You're 400 years old? Nearly five. And you know, I still haven't forgiven that wretched scribbler for what he did to me. Not that it wasn't my fault, too. Vanity. All vanity. I knew who he was, and was dumb enough to be flattered when he sought me out. Someone had told him that if he was going to write about trafficking with spirits, he should talk to me. And fool that I was, I helped him. Then I went to the first night of the Tempest and saw myself on the stage. You're... You're Prospero? Oh, he used another name, I'll give him that. But no one who knew me could have mistaken that character for anyone else. I left the city the moment the curtain went down and never returned. It wasn't easy, but I did it. 
made a new life in the colonies, kept to myself and moved on often enough that no one got suspicious. And I'm not ready to do it again just yet. So we have a little problem, don't we? Uh, no, no problem. He, he's, he's right. We wouldn't tell anyone. You would, though. Sooner or later, you wouldn't be able to help yourselves. You're not going to turn us into toads or anything, are you? <laughs> Magic is the same as any other kind of power. You don't use any more of it than you need to get the results you want. Toads. Well, what are you going to do? Just a little thing. Forget. <coughs> and what are all you doing here? Aren't you done for the night? Uh, we are... but... But what? Well, we had to come back to, um, to... To what? I, I don't remember. Yeah, me either. It couldn't have been too important then, could it? No, I, I guess not. So why don't you clear out and let me get to work here? I'm already behind from having to wait for the power to come back on. I wonder what... Huh. Huh? Oh well. <laughs> Good night, Glenn. Good night. Toby, I think we've done a good night's work already. What do you say we do this the easy way? Just this once. There. Clean as a whistle. Let's go. Exit stage right. A janitor and his faithful dog. Both good actors who know very well how to play the parts the world around them expects and how to slip into very different roles when a casting call comes from the Twilight Zone. And Cauldron Bubble, starring Virginia Williams with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was written for The Twilight Zone by Christine Watson. Heard in the cast were Ron Dean, David Darlow, Brian Plaharchuk, Taisha Davis, Patrick Francis, John Huganacher, Joby Cerny, Robert Richards, Rachel Greisinger, Natalie Berg, Katie Rose Sheehan, and Margaret Grace. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced by Carl Amari and directed by Joe B. Cerny for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design, custom Foley effects, recording, and editing are produced in the Cerny American Sound to Picture Theater by sound designers Craig Lee, Bob Benson, and Tim Cerny. Music for The Twilight Zone is provided by CBS and American Music Company, Incorporated, New York. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to download episodes, including six free episodes on our homepage, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking. <laughs> <laughs>